Hello, my name is Benjamin Klein, and I'm Associate Professor of Speech and Communication at Western New Mexico University. And I'm going to do something really exciting today. I'm going to talk to you about the Pecha Kucha and, um, and how it works into Ciceronian order. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Pecha Kucha on Pecha Kuchas. So what is a Pecha Kucha? A Pecha Kucha is a really fascinating form of public speaking. It's fast, it's practiced, it's prepared. It's 20 slides that go 20 seconds each. Uh, and so it's really, really fun. Uh, it's been going for a while now. It's just kind of taken the world by, by storm. If this is the first time you've heard of a Pecha Kucha, or some kind of people call them a Pachacha, uh, it won't be the last, I can promise you that. Uh, but what really interests me when we talk about a Pecha Kucha is the way that it works so well. Pecha Kucha is kind of a Japanese form of public speaking, but it so works well with our classic uh, Ciceronian uh, Roman forms of rhetoric. And that's really what I want to talk about today, the way that that works. So first we have to understand that Pecha Kucha, or Pachacha, uh, has always been an East meets West kind of speech, uh, kind of public speaking. It's very Western uh, in that it puts ideas together in a very linear way, a very logical way, but it's also very Eastern in that it's very visual. And that makes sense. See, it was developed by by these people. Uh, these are the CEOs of Klein Dutham and Associates. Uh, Klein Dutham and Associates are uh, an architectural firm uh, with offices in the Netherlands, Tokyo, and the United Kingdom. And because it has these offices in these divergent places, these Western and Eastern places, um, it brought ideas together from both. Now, this is a building that was uh, developed by Klein Dutham and Associates. It's from their website, this picture. And in this building, you can see there's all kinds of details that if you were an architect, you would want to explain how you got all of these details and how things happened in all of these interesting ways. Uh, and that could take a long time, but they don't have a long time. And so they, what they decided to do is the first Pecha Kucha night was put at this, at this hotel in Tokyo. Uh, they did the very first Pecha Kucha night. And what they asked their artists, their architects to do, is to present how they would do their projects using 20 slides and 20 seconds per, per each slide and little to no text. Actually, I think originally the rule was no text on the slides. And at first, it was just for a fairly practical reason, presenting to your architectural firm. But now it's taken the world by storm. This is from a Pecha Kucha night given in Chicago. People come out to hear Pecha Kuchas because you can get all of these ideas presented to you quickly. 400 seconds, and the speech is done. Uh, and all kinds of fun ideas. Um, and it fits really well, like I said, with Ciceronian rhetoric. This is a picture of Cicero from HBO's Cicero. Uh, it works very well with Ciceronian classical Roman rhetoric, which is the exordium, narratio, partitio, confirmatio, refutatio, and peroratio. Um, those parts fit perfectly into an exordium. So we'll start out by talking about the exordium. Uh, in the exordium, you build credibility. And so I have this picture of the Incredible Hulk to remind me of credibility. And that's kind of how Pecha Kuchas can work. The picture can be exactly what you're talking about, or it could be something that just pulls an idea to your head, uh, that tells you why you are, tells your audience why you are credible, and then you move on to the narratio. In the narratio, you tell your audience a story. A story. Some old public speaking uh, conversations have said, uh, you start out with a joke. Uh, a joke is okay if you're tell giving a funny speech. Uh, if you, but it, the narratio sets the emotional tone for the story. In this speech, I told the story of how the Chacucha developed. Then we move on to the partitio, where you preview your main points. You partition, also called the divisio sometimes. Uh, the partitio or the divisio is where you divide up your speech. For this point, I had that picture of Cicero up when I did it, and I listed off the exordium, narratio, partitio, confirmatio, refutatio, peroratio. Then you go into the proof. Again, I'm using a picture that, what does this have to do with the confirmatio? Well, Southern Comfort is 80 proof, uh, and uh, and so this is 
proof. It helps you remember. In the confirmation, you, you confirm or you prove your points. And so that's actually where I am right now in the speech. And I am still, even as, the, even as it changes to the picture of the refutatio. The refutatio is really important. This is where you go and you figure out where would an intelligent, uh, loving, good person disagree with me and why am I still right? Uh, so that's what you do in the, in the refutatio. Uh, so for this, I'm only really going to have a, a couple of slides for the refutatio, and I'm not there yet. I'm still in the confirmatio because my main points were to talk about the exordium neuratio, uh, confirmatio, refutatio, pararatio. And so the last thing is the pararatio. And the pararatio, you pull out all the rhetorical stops. Dr. King was, of course, very famous for his para ratios, especially the I have a dream. Now, now I'm going into my refutatio. My refutatio, why would some people not like the Pecha Kucha? Well, it it's, doesn't always work, and that's, that's true. Uh, sometimes if you try and put 20 slides into 20 seconds, you find that this is not something, 20 seconds each, this is not something I can talk about in 400 seconds, and it just becomes awkward, it becomes weird. Uh, you run out of time. Uh, time is so important in public speaking in general, but in a Pecha Kucha, you have to be very cognizant of time. You have to be very cognizant that you've only got 20 seconds for this slide. And sometimes you need more than 20 seconds. Sometimes it just takes longer. And some people say, oh, it's just awkward. A Pecha Kucha is just awkward. Uh, it's not the way I would want to give a speech. It's just weird. And, you know, I can understand all of these points. A uh, Pecha Kucha is. Uh, awkward and sometimes times don't quite work out and sometimes it's not the best for everything but for a lot of things it's a really really good choice and I would say right now that one of the reasons it's a great choice is because we have become in America an increasingly visual culture um, and in the Western world in general, an increasingly visual culture. Since the advent of television, people don't want to sit and listen to a speech. And if you make them sit and listen to a speech, they're going to get bored. Uh, they're going to get bored. They're going to move out. It's just not going to work for them. And so rather than getting them bored with a speech that goes on and on and on, you've got 400 seconds in a Pecha Kucha, and you can use that 400 seconds to keep them not bored, but rather to get them kind of excited about what's going on, to get them pumped. And the Pecha Kucha is a really great tool for doing that. It's short, it's visual, uh, it has all the parts of Cicerone and arrangement in it. And so I think it's a type of public speaking that you are going to want to use. And if you're taking my class, it's a type of public speaking that you have to use for two-thirds of your speeches. Thank you so much for listening to my Pecha Kucha today, um, and have a pleasant day. Go in peace.